Hello, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author and mental health educator. Welcome to your Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. The name, of the name of today's video, look, it's my birthday. What can I tell you? I turned 72 today. What can I say? I'm allowed to have a little bit of fun. Uh, anyway, all right. So uh, the name of today's video is Coping. Coping with the Loss of a Pet. Thank you, guys. And uh, But for, we have to have a joke first. And uh, I'm working at a job where the uh, employer demands perfect posture. I have a hunch I'm going to be fired. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the title of today's video is Coping with the Loss of a Pet. As I've mentioned in my other videos, how pets can help us heal from depression and your pets can keep us here or your pets can keep you here. Uh, for many people, pets are a large part of their emotional support, many families. That's why we have 70 million dogs and 50 million cats in America or vice versa. Uh, pets are like children. They give us the ability to give and receive love, to give and receive nurturance, and uh, they, they, of course, give us back love unconditionally as well as receiving it. And I see people all around my neighborhood walking their dogs. It's a common sight. Now, for people who suffer from depression and mood disorders, pets are especially important because many times they're isolated from people, they don't have family members, they don't have friends. The pet can be the only source of love they have. So here's where it becomes kind of difficult, and I saw this happen with my assistant. What happens when your beloved pet 10, 15 years, maybe 20 years, dies. How do you cope with that when you don't have other sources of support? Well, this video is designed to help you get some ideas about how you can cope when your beloved pet passes on. The first recommendation I have is to create a ritual. I've done this many times with my cat Gabriel. I even had a fish who died I could create a ritual for. And a good friend of mine named Claire suffers from depression, uh, just lost her 19-year-old cat. To cancer and to make her grieving easier, more bearable, to boost her morale, she's going to do a ritual very similar to what I did. She's going to take the ashes of the cat when she receives them, put them under the rosemary bush where the, you know, uh, pet the cat used to sleep, and uh, say some prayers for the cat, her husband, and um, also their next door neighbor who took part of the cat's care are going to join them. And her Buddhist teachers already said prayers prayers for the cat, and they're going to you know. Go ahead and sprinkle some uh, wonderful, you know, essential oils on the ashes and just really send the cat off in a loving way, just like we would do if we went to someone's memorial service. So, just like we go to memorial services or funerals to, as a ritual to say goodbye to the departed ones, you can do the same thing with a beloved pet. A second thing you can do if you lose a pet is to attend a support group. Uh, when my wife and I, Joan, lost our 19-year-old uh, Cat Gabriel. We went to a pet support group at the Dove Lewis Veterinary Hospital here in Portland. Now, Gabriel was very special to me because, as I've recounted before, when I was in my worst depressive episode in 1997, I adopted him from uh, the shelter here in Portland. His name was Quinn. I thought that was ridiculous. So I named him Gabriel, which means God is my strength. And that's exactly what he did for me. Uh, over the next nine months, as I nurtured him back to health, he'd actually been in an accident uh, recently, I came back to health and I got better and I emerged from my depressive episode into the light. We found, John and I, that going to the support group at Dove Lewis was really helpful because we got to hear other people's stories about their pets, how much they love them, and we got to realize that we were not alone. As you grieve for your pet's loss, you may be uh, experiencing a number of feelings. Sometimes your grief may come up in waves, Sometimes it may startle you suddenly by coming at once. Other times a memento of your pet, like your dog's collar or your cat's food dish, may bring up feelings of loss, intense feelings. In this case, it might be good to give them away to the Humane Society or a pet store like Petco that can do the same. Uh, or maybe you can just put them in a closet, keep them away for the time being, out of sight until your grief has moved further on and you're feeling like you're healing. The other thing that also happens is that the loss of a pet, because it, you have a bond, an attachment, can bring up unacknowledged losses of earlier attachments, like an old partner or even a uh, loss of a parent. This can be really difficult because not only do you have the present feelings of loss, then it's combined with all these past feelings and, and past feelings, and they can be almost overwhelming. So in that case, going to your counselor or therapist or finding a counselor or therapist to process not just the current grief, 
but the unacknowledged grief in the past. And I should also remember, uh, rem remind you that there are grief groups at, at hospitals and people can go there, not if they've just lost a loved one, a human being, but also an animal friend. So um, grief can, you know, again, come at, in many ways, but just hang in there because uh, as they say, time heals all wounds. People sometimes wonder, when is a good time to get a new pet? Well, your house may feel very empty when your pet dies, but don't be in too much of a rush to get a new one. Give yourself some time to grieve and process the loss until you feel a little healing. How long that takes is based on the individual. In my situation, uh, my darling cat Gabriel died in 2010, and it took four years before Bruce came into my life, who I'm incredibly happy with now. He's become an icon in my YouTube chats. I don't know what I'm gonna do when he dies, but I guess I'll cross that bridge when I come to it, huh? Uh, when you eventually decide to get a new pet, don't, remember, don't forget that um, uh, humane uh, societies and, and no-kill shelters have so many dogs and so many cats waiting for new homes. I would like to close by reminding us that loss is a part of life, and yet after loss there is gain. As the great poet Khalil Gibran said in his classic book, The Prophet, the deeper that sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. Or as the psalmist wrote, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. This has been Douglas Plot. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And pets are such a big, big deal in America, all countries. The animals are our brothers and sisters. And I hope what I've said here uh, can help you in processing the loss of a pet if and when it comes. In the meantime, if you like this video, please uh, give it a like. Uh, or you can uh, write your comments in the comments section. If you'd like to uh, email me, you can do so, douglasblock at gmail.com. And if you want to subscribe to this channel, you can click on my photo during the closing credits where you will be taken to the subscribe page. If you click on that, you'll be subscribed. If you click on uh, the bell to the right of the subscribe button, you'll be notified every time I do a new video or new live chat. And until we meet again, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you so much for watching.